week we're going to take up the topic of theories of curriculum. Uh, but as before, what I'd like to do is to review a very important concept from last week. Remember that we said that the learning process really is made up of three parts, uh, curriculum, instruction, and the learner. Uh, what we're doing this week is taking up theories of curriculum, but we also have to realize that the process of learning is really going to be a product not only of what we plan for students to learn, but also the act of teaching itself, and then also just what we know about the learner, the developmental needs of the learner and the social systems that the learner will actually uh, be engaged in. You know, theory is one of these things that's acquired a bad reputation, especially in education. Theorists are considered people who don't really understand reality. I think that's uh, probably stemming from a, a misunderstanding of the word theory itself. And I'd like to clarify that before we jump into the specific theories of curriculum. Uh, the word theory comes to us from the Greek word, actually, uh, theori, which means literally awareness or uh, wakefulness of mind. And it's, it's tentative knowledge of what we think works, the way a system works. The misunderstanding stems from um, our thinking that uh, a theory is the way we think the world ought to be, uh, what we believe to be the ideal situation. And that's not a theory at all. That's a utopian vision. Uh, a theory is, is what we learn from observation of the way something actually works. In the case of curriculum, what a theory is going to, to mean is tentative knowledge of the best way we think there is to go about uh, conceiving and, and developing and constructing a curriculum. And we do this for several reasons. Uh, first of all, we have to understand the process of curriculum development so that we can predict outcomes. If we know how a system works, then we can, with some degree of reliability, know what will happen at the end. Uh, also, we develop curriculum theories so we can explain reasons, uh, that is, explain why things happen the way they do. Um, that enables us to guide the process of curriculum development. It puts educators a little bit more in control of what um, the content would be and the purposes behind of a curriculum. We're going to look at, at several major curriculum theories. The authors of our uh, textbook outlined uh, quite a few of them, and we're going to try to simplify that and focus on actually uh, five different classes of curriculum theories. Uh, these would be the curriculum uh, seen as a managerial science, uh, curriculum seen as a, a human development science, um, or curriculum as intended learning outcomes, what we hope will happen as a result of the curriculum. A fourth is the curriculum as a way of experiencing social change. And finally, curriculum as a process of structuring knowledge. Those will be the, the five categories that we'll look at for encompassing the various curriculum theories that we're going to consider. First, let's look at the um, idea of curriculum as management or a management science. Uh, Frank Bobbitt was the first person really to be credited um, uh, with the uh, development of curriculum theory and he did his work in the, the late 19th century. Remember historically that, that this is the um, height of the Industrial Revolution and we're starting to go from uh, a cottage industry to factories and consequently there was a, a sort of a, a cult of efficiency that was taking over the industrial sector of uh, the economy at that time. And naturally uh, there were attempts to try to apply these new theories of efficiency in um, industry to schools and Frank Bobbitt was among those. Basically he said that uh, what we do in a curriculum is we identify specific subject objectives. We, we break 
the content of what we're supposed to learn into very small pieces or units and then we, we simply attach uh, specific learning activities to each of these uh, subject objectives and then as a result of that the process of constructing the curriculum is merely connecting the pieces of subject matter to the instructional activities. Uh, perhaps you can see the parallel here between what he was proposing we do in classrooms to what exactly uh, engineers, industrial engineers, were starting to do in factories. Of course, not everyone agreed that that was the best way to educate children. Uh, in fact, there was a strong objection to the uh, reduction, some would say even the triviali trivialization of subject matter to these little specific units. Um, John Dewey, who was a philosopher and, and psychologist early in the 20th century, actually his work extended well into uh, the mid-20th uh, century, uh, he, he uh, developed a new theory based upon the science of human development. and He said that everything that we teach, all knowledge that we impart to children, need to be based upon the experiences that those children have actually had. Uh, we need to link up what it was that we were expecting children to learn to what it was that they already um, had experience doing. Consequently, he said that the process of developing a curriculum was going to be connecting the experiences of students to instructional activities that were developmentally appropriate to the students at that particular point in time. In other words, he was basing the curriculum on the way children learned, whereas Franklin Bobbitt was basing the curriculum on specific subject matter that we thought children should learn. Ralph Tyler was a curriculum theorist that uh, actually kind of tried to blend both the work of Frank Bobbitt and the work of uh, John Dewey. And basically he said the process of developing a curriculum was going to be guided by objectives. Uh, but he didn't necessarily say, as, as Frank Bobbitt did, that these objectives are going to be subject driven. Um, he saw objectives as uh, skill-based and, and process-based as well as uh, subject-based. But he said that the curriculum is going to be uh, a matter of deciding what these learning outcomes are going to be and then organizing relevant experiences. See the influence of Dewey here. Relevant experiences and then evaluating whether or not the students actually um, accomplished these outcomes. Now, when he was talking about developing outcomes. He said we need to take into account the developmental levels of the students, the developmental appropriateness of the learning outcomes that we were designing, and the needs of society. So he was taking a much more uh, social perspective than Frank Bobbitt uh, was, but he still was being more specific in terms of what the student needed to learn um, in comparison to, to John Dewey. He, in, a, in essence, was trying to, to take what he thought was the best of both theories and blend them into um, um, an entirely new one. By the end of the uh, 20th century, we began to see a lot of attention being given to the curriculum as an instrument of social change. And uh, two theorists are closely associated with this movement, Paulo Freire and Henry Garreau. Uh, Paulo Freire was a Brazilian uh, educator. Henry Garreau is an American. Uh, both are closely associated with a movement in education referred to as critical pedagogy, that is, the science of teaching for the purpose of being critical of uh, the social institutions of education. Uh, let me try to explain that. It, it was the uh, belief of Freire that education was an institution that was controlled by the um, economically elite of um, society and that schools existed for the purpose of promoting the interests of the economically elite. Now, as I say that, you can probably see the, the roots of critical pedagogy or curriculum as social change uh, resting in uh, political activism and 
particular socialism and, and neo-Marxism. And uh, certainly uh, that, that cannot be denied. But I think uh, before we're too quick to criticize this theory of curriculum as a social change, we also have to recognize that in history uh, there are um, uh, subpopulations that have been uh, politically uh, marginalized uh, and uh, economically disenfranchised. And it was um, in response to this that Freire was saying that what the curriculum should be, the purpose of schools should be, to uh, uh, provide the uh, intellectual skills that are necessary for students to be critical of these institutions so that they can work toward social change. Uh, he used the metaphor of uh, a bank, seeing students largely as uh, the depositories of ideas of the uh, power class and teachers in schools as the depositors. And it was um, a criticism of this um, metaphor that led to his um, uh, approach to education and uh, curriculum. About the same time, we see another movement in curriculum theory developing, uh, largely as a result of advancements in cognitive psychology. Uh, two educational psychologists most closely associated with curriculum as structuring knowledge were Jerome Bruner and uh, Benjamin Bloom. Uh, basically, their uh, take on the way children learn is that it's a combination of prior knowledge and new knowledge. And it is, it is the uh, experience of education, the curriculum, uh, to be precise, that really is the bridge between prior knowledge and new knowledge. Uh, they saw the curriculum as a process of deciding what kind of learning outcomes were desirable and then structuring experiences, that is, designing a curriculum, so that prior knowledge can become new knowledge through the construction of um, of new meaning. Now my question is, uh, what's your personal theory of curriculum? Maybe you haven't really thought about it yet or, or developed one of your own, and, and perhaps uh, there may be uh, among the several uh, uh, that we've just briefly reviewed that you find yourself very uh, comfortable with. Um, you might be among those who uh, would prefer to, to draw what you see to be the best ideas from uh, several of these and, and uh, take a more eclectic approach where you, you put together several aspects of, of uh, these theories into one of your own. As we continue through the assignments this week and, and also through the uh, rest of the course, I'll be coming back to this question, uh, asking you what is your theory? That is, what is your observation of what works in reality, in terms of the uh, decisions that we have to make about curriculum, the purpose of schools, uh, the exact content that we need to include in, in the curriculum, and uh, even the process of going about implementing that curriculum. As before, um, look over on the left-hand column of the uh, uh, screen, and uh, you'll see the other assignments that we need to be working on this week. and. And as always, uh, don't hesitate to give me a call or, or an email if you have any questions.